The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining our March webinar, Temperature-Dependent Viscosity of Battery Mixtures. In this webinar, we will explore the temperature-dependent shear viscosity of multiple battery solvent mixtures and probe the effects of solvent composition and lithium perchlorate salt concentration on the shear viscosity of battery electrolytes. Today's webinar will be hosted by Dr. Christian Ochoa and Dr. Sohila Shabani. Christian Ochoa obtained his PhD in chemical engineering at University of Illinois at Chicago, where his PhD thesis focus was Meissler size, shape, and interactions determine stratification in foam films. Sohila Shabani obtained her PhD in mechanical engineering at Iowa State University, where her research focus was characterizing the viscoelasticity of hydrogels and complex fluids using colloidal probe microscopy technique. Her work on functional materials has been featured in the Journal of Chemical Engineering Science. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to turn it over to today's presenters. Thank you, Eden, for the great introduction. Um, so the, our presentation today will be uh, temperature-dependent viscosity of battery mixtures. Uh, and pretty much our goal is to uh, show you the characterization of viscosity of battery mixtures with our VROC technology. Uh, the viscosity is pretty much probed as a function of relevant temperatures, solvent compositions, and ion concentrations. So first, we will briefly go over the principles and applications of battery and battery technology. So these include uh, viscosity and dielectric constant of electrolytes, uh, also wettability and conductivity. Then we're going to explain our experimental methods, including which battery mixture uh, compositions, uh, relevant temperatures, and other conditions that were used. And then last, um, but not least, we're gonna show you our experimental results uh, and explain the effect of battery mixture uh, composition and temperatures on viscosity. And this is going to be uh, relevant for uh, making or formulation of more desired uh, battery solvent uh, mixtures. So principles of battery operation. Uh, a battery is um, a device that uh, stores this uh, chemical energy that is then converted into electrical energy. And the element of this battery is called the electrochemical cell, uh, shown here, um, also known as the galvanic cell. This is made up of an anode, a cathode, uh, a separator, and that separates the electrolyte in the two uh, parts. So there exists a difference in potential between each metal uh, electrode and it's um, the electrolyte that it um, is in contact with. Uh, the cathode has this positive potential with respect to solution, whereas the anode has this uh, negative potential with respect to the solution. And this potential difference between both is what allows the electrons to flow from the anode over to the cathode and this creates a current that goes in the opposite direction, uh, as shown by this arrow. Uh, in the meantime, you have um, positive ions that move through the electrolyte solution, and the viscosity of this electrolyte solution is gonna affect um, its wettability, uh, as well as the movement of these ions, uh, and this is gonna affect the conductivity and the performance of your battery. So for this talk, we're interested in how the viscosity is going to affect the conductivity and performance. So conductivity and performance of, of the batteries. So there are many battery types. Uh, we show some of these types um, here in this slide. Uh, we show rechargeable or secondary batteries uh, on the left side here, and the non-rechargeable or primary batteries uh, here on the right. Uh, so these rechargeable batteries, uh, they include um, many types. So some of these are nickel cadmium, lead acid, uh, nickel metal hydride, nickel zinc, uh, silver oxide, and a popular one, lithium ion. And these metals uh, 
pretty much denote the electrode uh, materials that are used. The non-rechargeable batteries uh, include this uh, alkaline uh, type of batteries. Uh, so these are like the AA, AAA, and other ones that you can purchase in um, most stores. Uh, another type is uh, of non-rechargeable battery is the sink air. So in this case, the two electrodes would be sink and air. Um, so the least expensive battery looking at this uh, slide would be the lead acid, likely out of all these uh, at the time. Uh, the most durable in terms of number of cycles uh, would be the lithium ion of these. Uh, if you look at the lowest self-discharge, so pretty much uh, this self-discharge, well, it's not connected to anything or powering anything. Uh, we would be looking at the non-rechargeable batteries. And uh, if you want the, for like a high energy density, the top one here would be the sink air and then followed by the lithium ion. So due to their individual properties, um, these batteries can be used for a very wide range of uh, applications. So here are some applications for these types of batteries. Um, so nickel cadmium, for example, has been used in uh, toys and toy cars. Uh, you have the silver oxide and zinc air that have been used for hearing aids. And you're very familiar with the uh, uses for alkaline batteries. Uh, some images are shown here, but there are many more uh, than just these images. Uh, and their applications, uh, some of these batteries can experience uh, extremes and uh, temperatures. Uh, for example, the lead acid um, and scooter batteries. Um, uh, the lead acid car and scooter batteries, that is. Um, and also the power tool batteries if you're not uh, using them in the temperature controlled environments. For example, if you're using these power tools outside or in other similar environments. Um, you also have uh, the electric vehicle lithium ion battery that can experience uh, extremes and temperatures. And this is uh, a battery type that I guess more people um, are familiar here with uh, here in California. Uh, so these temperature extremes can be undesirable for optimizing battery conductivity and performance. So this is why we're interested in how the temperature affects the battery conductivity um, and the performance. And we're gonna study this by taking viscosity measurements of battery solutions that we obtained um, here in-house with our VROC uh, microfluidic uh, MEMS technology. So battery conductivity um, is um, something that is um, dependent on uh, some factors, and one of those is the viscosity, and the viscosity itself is dependent on properties like the size of the ions, uh, solvation of ions, and the nature of the electrolyte and of the solvents. So even though the, this battery conductivity can be uh, related to these properties, uh, we're mainly going to focus on the role of viscosity of the electrolyte. Uh, and to a lesser extent, we're going to um, uh, look at the nature of the solvents and the nature of the um, electrolyte uh, through a discussion on dielectric constant. So this conductivity and performance of batteries is dependent on the viscosity of the electrolyte solution uh, as well as dielectric constant. So how does viscosity, uh, this conductivity depend on viscosity? So we can look at this uh, ion mobility equation and it shows that mobility is uh, inversely proportional to the viscosity of the solution and the size of the ion. Uh, and this means that uh, a higher viscosity will give you a lower conductivity. Uh, conductivity also depends and correlates directly with dielectric constant uh, so a definition dielectric constant, for those that are uh, not too familiar, so we define, uh, we can define it as a reflection of the way that the molecules in the solution, the electrolyte, uh, the way these are polarized by like a local electric field. So a higher dielectric constant means that the solvent uh, or the electrolyte is more readily dissociating these, uh, the salts into the, into ions. 
and giving you a higher concentration of um, ions in solution and hence a higher conductivity. So a higher conductivity and other properties you desire of, uh, uh, from an electrolyte will include the low viscosity and the high dielectric constant. So this plot here is a log-log plot and it shows the dielectric constant uh, versus viscosity for some battery solvents. Uh, so this data was obtained uh, from literature and we're gonna take a look at this uh, ethylene carbonate solvent first. Uh, so for this one, the dielectric constant and viscosity were measured at 40 degrees Celsius. And this is because it's um, a solid below 37 uh, degrees. So we can see that it has a much, a relatively higher dielectric constant uh, than the uh, other solvent shown here. So this contributes to a higher conductivity, uh, but it has a relatively much higher viscosity. And this, uh, as you know, contributes to a lower conductivity. So this is a reason why this, uh, the high dielectric constants, uh, solvents like ethylene carbonate, mm -hmm. Um, are combined with uh, the low viscosity, low dielectric solvents like dimethyl carbonate or ethyl methyl carbonate to get um, improved uh, conductivity. So it's important to optimize the concentrations of solvents um, with uh, different dielectric constants um, and viscosities uh, to pretty much uh, achieve this optimal conductivity. So in our experiments, uh, we're going to be focusing on ethylene carbonate, or EC, as well as uh, ethyl methyl carbonate, or EMC, and dimethyl carbonate, um, or DMC. Uh, and we're going to focus on these because these are uh, commonly used uh, solvents. So now I will uh, hand it over to Soha. So thank you, Chris, and thank you, Eden, for your nice introduction. Uh, so my name is Soha, and I'm application scientist at Reasense. So as uh, Chris mentioned, there is a relationship between uh, viscosity and uh, wettability. Uh, here I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the effect of viscosity on wetting rate of the electrolyte. Uh, so you know that uh, viscosity is an important physical property uh, that directly impacts uh, wettability. Uh, to analyze the relation of electrolyte viscosity and surface tension uh, with wettability, uh, we can use uh, Lucas Washburn equation as shown here. According to this equation, uh, the wetting rate of the electrolyte on the electrode films uh, is inversely proportional uh, to the viscosity. So that uh, at lower viscosity, uh, it exhibits um, better wetting rate. This figure that I borrowed from literature uh, nicely compares the wettability of different electrolytes. Uh, based on this plot, uh, DMC has the fastest wetting rate and uh, the electrolyte with lithium salt shows the lowest wetting rate. Um, regarding the effect of EC or ethylene carbonate um, on wettability, in general, adding EC to the solution uh, increases the surface tension and the increase in surface tension um, theoretically should increase the wetting rate. However, the viscosity also increases by adding an EC because EC is a high uh, viscosity solvent, uh, which will decrease the wetting rate. As a result, the final wetting rate as seen in this plot is reduced from pure EMC to EC EMC mixtures. So uh, the effects of solution on the wetting rate can be analyzed through combined influence of uh, surface tension, tension and viscosity. Well, uh, we have had full uh, this, uh, viscosity review and discussion in our previous webinars. So now I'm just gonna remind everyone and go over a basic overview of uh, what viscosity is. 
as you know, viscosity is the resistance to follow by a fluid. Um, it's uh, defined as the ratio between shear stress or deformation experienced by a fluid uh, divided by shear rate. And shear rate is the velocity gradient that is perpendicular to the direction of flow. So, for example, in this diagram, um, fluid is moving from left to right, and the shear rate is changing perpendicular to the flow direction. So, this shearing motion, meaning that um, adjacent fluid elements uh, are moving past each other at a, a different velocity. Um, now, um, I think it becomes clear why shear viscosity is so sensitive to what is happening at the molecular level. Um, at the molecular level, the viscosity of fluid is the molecular friction between the molecules uh, within the fluid. So, this response of the fluid uh, gives reflection of how molecules or particles uh, interact and then how these interactions will influence microstructure. So, for example, if your fluid has particles inside, their size, shape, and interaction can be reflected in the viscosity as well as any possible microstructure. With that in mind, now I'm going to talk to you uh, a little bit about our technology, VROC technology. VROC uh, stands for viscometer, rheometer on a chip. This technology is different than rotational instruments and gravity-driven capillary tubes. Uh, our technology is a combination of microfluidics and MEMS, uh, so uh, microelectromechanical systems, where we have a rectangular microfluidic channel and four pressure sensors, which are linearly aligned within the channel. Uh, for our instrument, we control flow rate, Q. Uh, since we know the geometry of the channel, I mean width and depth, we can calculate shear rate uh, from the flow rate and the dimensions of the channel. And then we measure the pressure drops across four pressure sensors. Knowing the dimensions of the channel, then we can calculate shear stress. And as you know, viscosity is shear stress divided by shear rate. Uh, this is how we calculate viscosity. So we control shear rate, measure shear stress, and then we um, calculate viscosity. Uh, for battery solutions, uh, we use our initium technology, which is our high throughput automated viscometer rheometer. Uh, battery solvents are uh, volatile, and initium is a closed system, so uh, it can eliminate any artifacts that uh, might occur due to evaporation of fluid. Um, also, battery solutions are low viscous fluids, and initium is ideal for low viscosity measurements with high accuracy. For example, the lowest viscosity that we measured in our experiments uh, for battery solvents is around 0.4 centipoles. So these are two main reasons that uh, we decided to use our initium for measuring the viscosity of battery solvents. Uh, thank you very much, Soha. So for our first set of viscosity experiments, we looked at the temperature dependence of the viscosity for these uh, battery solvent mixtures of DMC, EMC, and EZ. So these uh, mixtures had different ratios of these. Um, and more specifically, it had different ratios of ethylene carbonate um, in these solutions containing um, one to one parts of uh, DMC to EMC. So, to go over the steps, we prepared um, these samples at room temperature. We used the VROC Initium 1 Plus with an AO5 chip. Uh, we then set the automatic testing mode uh, for all the experimental runs. So as uh, to as like a refresher the, in this mode, uh, the software pretty much adjusts the flow rate to give you a pressure uh, reading that's about fifty percent of the full scale pressure. Um, 
So to load the samples, we loaded about uh, 70 microliters of the sample with the sample retrieval feature the activated. So because we did this, we only needed one loaded volume um, to perform all the viscosity segments for each mixture. For the cleaning protocols, uh, we determined that chloroform uh, to be an appropriate uh, cleaning solution for these solvents. And the reasons for this are, are that um, all the solvents here are soluble in chloroform. Uh, also, chloroform is volatile, so the channel can be dried uh, relatively easily. And this allowed us to use only chloroform instead of um, a combination of solvents, uh, like is typically used for, say, uh, proteins. So if you want to create um, your own custom cleaning protocol, um, just like we did, uh, we recommend you contact us and we can help you with that. So here, um, before we show you our data, we'd like to show you some uh, data we um, got from literature for which the ethylene carbonate or EC, uh, for, this, uh, for which this um, ratio was also varied. Uh, so here was buried uh, in a solvent uh, containing um, uh, ethylene carbonate, uh, dimethyl carbonate, and one mole per kilogram uh, lithium hexafluorophosphate. Uh, so the x-axis shows the mole fraction of ethylene carbonate in the solvent. The black squares uh, are for the conductivity data shown on the left y-axis, and the red triangles are for the viscosity shown on the, on the right y-axis in red. So as this fraction of ethylene carbonate uh, is increasing in uh, DMC, dimethyl carbonate, the, the dielectric constant of the mixtures uh, will increase, as shown here. And this contributes to um, the increase in conductivity. Um, so this, the conductivity increase is shown here. Um, while this is happening, the viscosity is increasing as well. Uh, and above a viscosity of around 3, 3.5 center point, uh, this viscosity contribution will uh, dominate. And above that, the conductivity will decrease. So this change uh, is also, um, this change from conductivity increasing to decreases is also um, shown by this uh, dashed line where that takes place. So this is a reminder of how viscosity can affect your uh, conductivity. And these uh, measurements on viscosity are going to help us get um, a better understanding of the conductivity for um, our battery mixture solutions. So this is uh, our data that we obtain. So this uh, plot shows the viscosity uh, as a function of temperature for these seven samples that contain uh, different ratios of uh, DMC, EMC, and EC. Uh, so for each sample and temperature, uh, we did multiple trials. Uh, and then these were averaged to get the viscosity for each uh, sample and temperature. Uh, there are actually error bars here, um, but they're smaller than the size of the symbol, so you cannot really see them. Uh, so this indicates very good uh, repeatability with uh, our initium instruments for these very low viscosity samples. As you can see, uh, and as Soha mentioned, we went down to viscosities of around 0.4 uh, millipascal second or centipoid. So this, um, another thing to note is that the viscosity is decreasing with the temperature for all these samples. And we looked at temperatures between uh, four and 70 degrees Celsius. And this is the range that um, we can probe with, uh, with the initium. This, uh, another thing is uh, viscosity increases with the uh, addition of this uh, EC or ethylene carbonate to these mixtures um, as shown here. And this uh, larger viscosity um, mixtures um, are showing this uh, steeper decrease in viscosity with temperature as well. Now you can see here these uh, dashed lines um, and these are Arrhenius, um, Arrhenius fits to the viscosity versus the absolute temperature. And these are uh, good fits, as you can see. So the Arrhenius model is, um, is good, is uh, appropriate for these mixtures uh, and temperatures. 
So we can use the model to interpolate or um, extrapolate uh, viscosities to uh, these um, higher or lower um, temperatures that are relevant to uh, battery applications. So we obtain this activation energy from the FITS and we plot it here as a function of um, uh, ethylene carbonate concentration. So here it's the ratio of ethylene carbonate to um, um, one to one parts DMC, EMC. And this activation energy is increasing from about um, 9.4 to around 9.8 kilojoules per mole as this ratio of ethylene carbonate um, increases from zero to one uh, in these mixtures. Uh, so activation energy here uh, pretty much reflects the dynamics of the molecules. So this increase in activation energy is indicating that there's a uh, decrease in mobility of the of the solution of the solvent molecules. Um, and this happens with, um, this is happening with an increase in viscosity and this concentration of ethylene carbonate. Uh, thank you, Chris. Um, so for our second set of experiments, uh, we measured viscosity of lithium ion battery electrolytes uh, with varying ratios of DMC, EMC, EC, and lithium perchlorate concentrations. Uh, uh, so we prepared these samples at room temperature and uh, we used our Initium 1 Plus with an AO5 chip. Uh, to do these experiments, we created a level generated um, measurement protocol in the VROC Initium software. And uh, for each mixture, we loaded about 70 microliter of the sample into the chip and um, just like a previous experiment, we um, we activate the sample retrieval feature, so uh, so that multiple trials can be performed with only one loaded volume. Uh, so you see how much sample we use for our measurements. Uh, just a small amount of sample is needed for running multiple experiments, which is incredible, I think. Uh, for the cleaning protocol. Um, we used acetone uh, since all of the solvents and salt are soluble in acetone. And acetone really did a great job in cleaning the flow paths in uh, our uh, instrument. Uh, since we added lithium salt uh, to our solutions, uh, I would like to show you some data from literature uh, on the effect of salt concentration on conductivity. Uh, the electrolyte is an important component uh, in lithium batteries and it's usually um, composed of a solvent, lithium salt, and additive. Kai et al. Uh, have published a nice pa paper on uh, viscosity and conductivity of battery electrolyte and they measure conductivity of electrolytes with different contents of lithium salt uh, at different temperatures. So the conductivity of electrolyte uh, reflects the migration rate of ions during charging and discharging processes. Um, as seen in this figure, um, the conductivity increases with increasing lithium salt, um, concentration of lithium salt, and uh, which is because the number density of charge carriers increases <clears throat> with the concentration of salt at a lower viscosity of the electrolyte. However, after a certain threshold or concentration, conductivity decreases uh, with increasing concentration of salts. This is because the um, conductivity in this concentration range is affected mainly by viscosity, uh, which increases with uh, the concentration of salt. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Knowing um, the effect of salt concentration on conductivity, uh, we added lithium salt to our electrolyte for the second set of our experiments. Uh, this is our data we obtained. Uh, we prepared two solvent combinations. One of them contains only dimethyl car carbonate or DMC and ethyl methyl car carbonate or EMC. And the other one uh, contains all three solvents, I mean DMC, EMC, and EC. 
These solvents uh, were prepared at room temperature and then uh, varying quantities of lithium perchlorate were added to each solvent mixture. <clears throat> the experiments were performed at <clears throat> different shear rates. However, battery solutions exhibit um, Newtonian behavior. <clears throat> this figure um, represents our data and uh, the, the average viscosity as a function of lithium perchlorate concentration for two solvent combination. Based on data from this figure, um, it shows that adding EC increases the viscosity of the electrolytes. So uh, here the purple symbol uh, is electrolyte containing EC and the red one is electrolyte without EC. One advantage of adding EC to carbonate-based electrolytes is its higher dielectric constant that can contribute to salt uh, dissociation in the solution. Uh, another thing is that uh, this figure also shows the effect of lithium perchlorate concentration on the viscosity of electrolytes. The exact axis is the concentration of uh, lithium perchlorate. As expected, um, increasing the concentration of lithium perchlorate uh, results in a higher viscosity of the electrolyte. For the EC free electrolytes, uh, a higher concentration of lithium perchlorate um, can be uh, beneficial uh, because uh, it can assist with ion dissociation and uh, increases the conductivity of the system. Uh, in the continuation of our experiments on a battery solution, we studied the viscosity of ethylene carbonate or EC as solvent containing varying concentrations of lithium perchlorate. Uh, EC is solid at room temperature. So for our experiments, we first heated it up to 60 Celsius to be melted and then uh, added lithium perchlorate. The viscosity measurements were carried out at 40 Celsius uh, with the Virag Initium 1 Plus. Uh, actually, this set of experiments was um, kind of challenging due to the properties of EC at room temperature. But the good thing is that uh, it shows the flexibility of our Initium technology and uh, it shows that we can run experiments on solid EC at uh, elevated temperature and measure the viscosity. Uh, VROG Initium um, offers viscosity measurements at um, controlled temperature with the highest accuracy and repeatability. For these experiments, uh, the temperature of syringe and chip uh, was set at 40 Celsius at which the EC is liquid. Uh, we then preheated the loading syringe and um, used manual loading feature and um, loaded about 70 microliter of the sample into the chip and we also activated the retrieval uh, feature. For cleaning the chip, um, for this set of experiments, we modified our cleaning protocol, a proper uh, cleaning protocol that works best here uh, and prevents clogging in our uh, flow path, contains uh, dimethyl carbonate or DMC and acetone uh, that operates at uh, 40 Celsius. And here is the results. Uh, this figure represents the average viscosity as a function of lithium perchlorate concentration in uh, EC. Uh, the viscosity of EC at 40 Celsius wa was measured as a 1.92 millipascal second, um, uh, which is in very good agreement with the most reliable published data. As seen in this figure, increasing the concentration of lithium perchlorate results in a higher viscosity of the electrolyte. Uh, among various battery solvents, uh, EC exhibits a high di dielectric constant and uh, high viscosity. In general, the conductivity of electrolyte uh, decreases as the viscosity incre increases. Uh, for the high EC content electrolytes, um, Adding uh, lithium perchlorate um, can result in a um, lower dielectric constant uh, that when combined with higher viscosity can lead to a decrease in the conductivity. Basically, the desirable properties of an electrolyte include low viscosity and high dielectric constant. Uh, 
So an optimum combination of solvents and salt uh, can result in an electrolyte uh, with desired properties. So to conclude, uh, we pretty much, uh, we looked at the viscosity of these battery mixtures as a function of the relevant temperatures, uh, solvent compositions, and ion concentrations. Uh, the conductivity and performance of these uh, different electrolyte solutions um, uh, is enhanced by these lower values of viscosity, uh, but higher values of dielectric constant. And the results that extracted that we extracted are pretty much show that how we can combine these different uh, electrolyte uh, salt concentrations, uh, solvents, and temperatures to uh, to get to achieve these desired properties for the batteries. Um, so to optimize the performance, um, there's this balance between uh, all these factors: so salt concentration, solvent concentration, temperature. Etc. And because viscosity is sensitive to all these, we can um, accurately and and reliably measure the the small viscosities with uh, with our instruments. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, any questions? So if you have any questions, we can take those yeah. at the moment. Uh, Eden, um, are you uh, are you here? I am here. Um, Looks like we have a question. Um, do you see an observable? So the question is, uh, do you see an observable difference in battery performance as a function of uh, increasing, or increasing or decreasing battery viscosity formulation? Um, so to answer this question, uh, actually the performance of battery uh, can be defined uh, like um, high conductivity or high availability. So uh, in order to choose the best viscosity range, um, I think uh, battery experts uh, definitely can uh, answer better, but I think um, some factors must be taken into consideration, uh, like conductivity, availability that we discussed in our webinars. So, uh, uh, and uh, we had a um, plot in our webinar that showed the um, relationship between conductivity and viscosity. So at a certain viscosity, for example, we had the highest conductivity. So to optimize the uh, battery performance, I think these factors must be taken into consideration and conductivity, availability, and, uh, but the desirable properties uh, that we um, actually uh, know and we are aware of is uh, low viscosity and high dielectric constant. So, yeah, actually, I think uh, the balance between these factors uh, can help us to develop a, a, a battery with good performance. Chris, if you want to add 
kind of thing. Well, I think that's a good explanation. Uh, I don't think I see any additional questions at the moment. You can correct me if I'm wrong, Eden. I think, oh, I see another, I see more questions now. Okay. Um, several. So on, on slide 14, uh, what shear rates were tested was Newtonian behavior observed. So we can go ahead and go to slide 14. Um, just let me answer the second part of the question. Sorry, before you uh, uh, go over uh, the first part. Uh, actually, yeah, we actually observed Newtonian behavior. Uh, we did the ex experiment uh, at, a, at a wide range of uh, shear rates and uh, yeah, we did observe uh, Newtonian behavior for battery solvents. Correct. Uh, we did uh, observe this Newtonian behavior as uh, Soha mentioned. And um, for this, um, for the ex uh, viscosities uh, that we obtained here, uh, these were measured um, at uh, one, um, one shear rate uh, that corresponded to about 50% full scale pressure of the, of the chip. So we, we focused on that um, individual shear rate uh, that corresponds to that pressure for these uh, low viscosities that we have. So uh, I think there were additional questions here. I... What are some artifacts? So this mm -hmm. question reads, what are some artifacts that can occur if I am using a viscometer open to the atmosphere? Uh, actually, I think um, because uh, battery solvents are volatile and uh, they can evaporate easily, uh, if you use open uh, atmosphere and if part of the solvent evaporates, so the concentration uh, changes. Uh, so changes in concentration, uh, definitely affect the viscosity measurements. So the good thing about our instruments is that our instruments is a closed system. So there is um, a low, very low risk of evaporation in our mm -hmm. system. And uh, uh, actually for these types of solvents and um, solutions, which are volatile, mm -hmm. uh, we uh, did very uh, accurate uh, measurements and the the data um, are uh, accurate and uh, we have uh, we, we we don't have the um, the evaporation uh, of the solvents that might occur in open systems um, and another thing that I would like to add as I uh, explained uh, in the webinar in my slide um, EC for example is uh, solid at room temperature so we should first heat it up to be melted and then we should run the experiments at high uh, temperature at elevated temperature and the temperature should be controlled during the during the experiments. So with initium system, we can easily control the temperature and we can set temperature at 4 DC and the, all experiments can be performed at 4 DC uh, with high accuracy. So um, yeah, actually these uh, closed system helps us to control temperature better and to mm -hmm. avoid any evaporation. Yeah, it's important to note that for the experiments, like the one shown here where we combine EMC, DMC, and EC. EC did not have to be heated up, so that could dissolve uh, with the other solvents. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas for the experiments shown, uh, explained later by Soha, for those, uh, as Soha explained. Um, um, yeah, exactly, EC and salt. Yeah, for EC and salt, the EC had to be uh, melted to mm -hmm. um, combine with the uh, with the salt in that case. Exactly, because both of them are solid at room temperature and uh, yeah, we should heat it, heat yeah. it, them, heat, heat it up EC and then added lithium salt. Yeah. yeah, and this closed system we have is more helpful, especially for uh, these combinations of solvents where you have this very volatile um, solvent uh, DMC uh, mixed with a less volatile solvent like ethylene uh, carbonate. Um, so this will, um, prevent you from um, having a solution that will you know, change uh, viscosity through evaporation. 
uh, of this uh, DMC. Um, so I think I don't see any additional questions. Um, so if there are no uh, additional questions, um, I think we can uh, conclude the seminar here. Uh, thank you everybody very much for uh, attending the, the webinar. Uh, thank you very much for your time, for your great questions. Um, and yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we wish you all a great, a great day and rest of the week. Thank you very much. Christian, just a heads up, you're in control, so you'll want to hit stop broadcast. Uh, oh, okay. I will do that.